Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about design. Now, if you're new to programming, or even if you're, you're uh, even if you're intermediate or whatever, design and architecture can be quite difficult. It's hard to know how, how to, how to organize your systems, how to connect stuff together, who talks to what. It's very complicated and uh, I took a passion to architecture and design pretty early. Even like when I was finishing university, I took more driven like, uh, you know, agile, lean uh, stuff. So that's like methodologies, but we looked at a lot of design patterns and, uh, you know, I studied a lot of design patterns, studied a lot of just tech talks of how people architecture their, their software systems. And it can be very, made very complicated, like a lot of people use very complicated methodologies. And like I mentioned in the previous video, I feel the tool should match the, the scale of the problem, the magnitude of the problem. And what, how I like to go about things is I, I look at systems, how they are consumed by the external world. So most systems will be consumed by a user on an application, but that's not always true. So if you think of, you know, OAuth systems or, or single sign-on or like uh, APIs, like you don't know how that API is being consumed. So you should focus on how others like computer systems can interact on your data. Like that would be the, the, the focus of the, uh, of the architecture is how is your software being consumed and looked at. And the way I like to do it in real life is if I'm making a web application and keep in mind, every, all of this is opinionated. So people do, some people do event storming, uh, event modeling. I do, well, there's a thousand ways to look at this problem and I'm not claiming to be the one, the one way to do it or whatever. I might, you know, I might be, have, I might, maybe I have some blind spots or something like that. So that's definitely one thing to keep in mind. But in the projects that I have led at, at work and the ones that I work on in real life, I just feel it's a very effective way to work top down, which is, you, you uh, design your interfaces and how your interface is going to look like and your services should be designed for consumption, right? It, you're not like looking at the DB first and then working, okay, what's the best way for the DB to uh, look like? Like no one's going to be worried about how it's implemented. Like no one cares how things are implemented. They care how, what is the interface? What's the contract? The contract should be easy to use. Uh, the software should be easy to use and the experience for a user should be easy to use first. And we should look how the software is being used first and then make implementation decisions later. No matter what, no matter what, even like, so even if you're doing a REST API, which is not necessarily being consumed by an interface, it could be consumed by another machine. You should still, still think what's the best way for that machine to consume the data. That, 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 that I believe is should be the focus. And obviously it's gonna be more complex, the bigger and more complicated your system is and the more interfaces your system has and the more uh, interaction with the outside world your, your system's gonna be. And maybe, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe, sh <laughs> maybe someone should suggest a better way of designing things for those big systems because obviously I've never you know, designed a Netflix scale system, right? So. That, that's something to keep in mind. You're, you're being victimized by my biases here, here. So now another thing I like to add is the current meta of CQRS, DDD, microservices, uh, spaceship, shuttle, rocket science, Death Star designs, over-designed gold plating stuff. I think it's a, a very big trap to fall into, at least at first. We can always start with a simpler, slightly monolithic design and you know within that monolithic design you can still separate your code into modules that can be easily exported out once it needs to be and i think that's a big problem that I, I i suffer from this like all the time i want to make like cool grandiose designs but at the end of the day you can always refactor later and that's something we always forget and it's very difficult bias for uh more engineered type minded people we just want to make the biggest rocket ship super destroyer like lasers everywhere when in reality we can just do a very simple like super simple implementation and always increment the the design and complexity as needed by the system right 
So if you have like a, a user load of 10 people per day, like don't go off firstly like deploying microservices everywhere like crazy. Maybe, hey, maybe once your software is good, then you can refactor it in something to, to accept more scale. But uh, that's something uh, that a massive trap that we often fall into. And that does not mean that if you know day one, you're getting a million users. Like if you're, if you're Google and you're going to deploy uh, Google Flights, like, you know, like day one or day two, you can like advertise the traffic and you know you're going you're gonna to get like hundreds of uh, thousands of, of traffic of like user per day or something like that. And yeah, that would be definitely important to take into account those load needs at face value. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Keep it simple and make it complex later. We want our application, or I want my application to be consumed via a web interface. Maybe later we'll add a fabulous port so we can have a web app, uh, mobile application. Let me know if you want that. Uh, but for now, we want a web application. And what I'm going to do after I, when I go to the computers, I'm just going to draw or just like jot out uh, an interface and how it's going to look like. Now, obviously, first of all, I'm not a designer, so <laughs> like a, a designer, like a like a actually drawing things out. So it's going to be pretty ugly, but I'm going to do my best. Obviously, if it's a real project, I'm going to hire someone's good in design. So the, the, the UX and the UI is going to be great. And that's something I recommend for developers, which side note, when people make like examples for technology, it's good to have well, like good looking examples because people like often botch out. Like uh, I, I understand developers don't really care about how things look because it's like very like left side of the brain and you know how it, I, I'm like I was like that in university I wouldn't have curtains in my room I right? I duct tape some cardboard in my windows so it block out everything obviously I'm <laughs> I'm like functionality first I don't care how it looks but um, other people don't think like that and you should recognize if you have that like programmers bias of it's not about how it looks it's how about functionality. Uh, you should keep that in mind. Not everybody thinks like that. And actually most people really care about how things look. So for this video, even uh, for this project, even though I don't really care about the interface, I'm going to do my best to make it a, a cool looking interface. So people can say, Hey, I can build something like that. Right? Some people look at technology and the examples don't look too great. Like even the colors and the contrast is really bad. And I was like, ah, I don't want to use that because you know, I want to build, make a, a good application. When in reality, there's no reason why given with a given tool, it can't look good. It's just, uh, you know, when you're inexperienced, you see an example, you say, I don't want to look that. It looks so bad. I don't want to use that. Anyway, so we're going to, you know, draw up a little interface and that'll give me a great idea of what the, what the services need to look like. So if, for example, if we want a page to open up a certain stock and I get all the indicators for that stock, well, I know I'm going to have like some. API call for a given stock. I know for that given stock, I can get a list of indicators and, and stuff like that. I know it might need to be dynamic because I know I, I want to add some indicators. So going through each of the interfaces and thinking about how we're going to um, fulfill that data that needs to be in the front end, that's going to give me a good design for the REST API side of things. That's kind of where I like to start. Uh, we're going to be walking through on the computer um, and recognize that this might be a kind of an artist's way of designing things. I don't have a like methodological uh, way of doing things like step one, do this, step two, do that and uh, stuff like that. So a lot of it is as much as it as is engineering, like the, the technical aspects of load performance and stuff need to be taken into account. Um, but other than that, I just try, that's basically how I look at it. I start top down and, uh, the data and the performance of the services will be a reflection of what, of how it needs to be consumed. So that's pretty much it for the design we're going to walk through. Hopefully it's going to be much more clear how I do things. And, uh, like I said, to reiterate, this does not mean you have to design your system like, like that. Um, you can look at how other people do it. Um, but this has been what, uh, like the pattern we've used, I, I, I used to use at work and it's a pattern I still use today. So, uh, yeah, we're going to jump on the computer. 
All right, welcome back to the computer section. So before I begin, uh, I'm recording this a few days ahead of my like latest batch of videos. So I already like announced the series by now. So uh, thank you guys for subscribing and liking and commenting and everything. There's been like a lot of support. I'm really happy about that. So uh, keep it going. Uh, really excited to grow this. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I probably have other announcements to make, but I'm just going to go ahead and write this. So I'm doing this live, and I think I'm going to be doing most of the writing the code and the designing live, so you get like a very honest uh, process. It's kind of easy for me to, um, you know, hit pause, look at stuff. Uh, so I might like might do a bit of it, but uh, I'm trying to really dump my mind a bit and uh, just share how I think about things and. You know, that'll reveal, reveal many blind spots, but it might, like, help a lot of people as well. Uh, I think uh, it often happens that we, we don't feel we're, we're good enough to design a system. And, you know, even even people who have done it a long time uh, don't necessarily know anything, everything. And uh, there's a lot of looking up stuff, Googling stuff, uh, learning stuff on the fly. So don't be worried about that. So I have a whiteboard in front of me. And uh, you can use whatever tool you want. Like, it'd probably be more efficient to use, like, something like Adobe XD or something like that for wireframing. Um, but I don't, like, for this project, I'm just going to draw it out, jot it out. Um, most interfaces. And from the interfaces, we'll take a deeper look at how we need to fulfill that data. And uh, that will dictate the, uh, the architecture of our system. So let's let's get started. So basically, it's going to be a web project, or at least this this UI is going to be web. I might have a a mobile front end uh, in the future. So let's start like with the main page. And uh, so the the design meta right now is either like a taskbar. Well, that's a bit small. So you like it. Well, uh, bum bum bum. You know, like a taskbar at the top with like uh, the logo here and a bunch of tabs for whatever. That's like one way to do it. Um, another way that interests me is the uh, the sidebar here. So like there's like a collapsible sidebar that you can click and open up. Um, I actually like this for a an application more. I have to check uh, with like this pattern if I have like this thing, um, where the where does the logo go? Does it like is it here? I'll try to find an example real quick of what I'm talking about, and we'll see. So I poked around a little bit, and I think um, this is something that's pretty cool, just like uh, Google Drive. So uh, Google Drive has kind of this top layer where you can search, and maybe you can put like options and stuff, but it also has like a sidebar where you can access the different uh, functionalities. So this might be the best of both worlds, to be honest. So I'm gonna go for something like this. So yeah, we can just do a top a top line here, and I can have a, like my logo here, and eventually I might want to search uh, symbols. That's gonna be like uh, a later functionality. Maybe uh, you know we can have a taskbar here with all the different stuff. Like if you want to look at, um, I don't know to be honest, like. Uh, certain indicators or, or creating strategies uh, looking at different indicators um, you name it uh, current positions like your account like we can start and have like these functions and uh, so that's something so let's actually type these out account I want to add text here so first one can be account the second one can be uh, strategies hey there's even some aligning there that's cool um, I think for for now, we're going to be defining strategies and we're going to be uh, looking at stocks and stocks can either be, um, so there's going to be like a summary here, right? I, I feel there's going to be a summary here. And if you want to look at a specific stock, you can either access it via, I think there's going to be like a summary. So there's going to be, uh, you can like have a, Where's my pen? There it is. I think there's going to be something like uh, like a widget here, maybe a main widget here. 
So this can be a account summary. You could have probably typed that out. Um, you know, you can have account summary, so you can have all your positions here, maybe. So uh, let's type that out. Just like um, position one. Oh, I got it. So I have to remove the pen for it, for it to move it. That's why it wasn't working. So position one, and um, I can probably find bum bum bum. Uh, you know, P and L stuff. So P and L means profit and loss, and I probably want that information next to my position. So I actually probably want this on the right hand side, and I probably want. Um, uh, how much, like, what's, what's the quantity I'm holding? Like, so my, my position size in, in shares or something like that. So maybe it can go position. It can go here. Like, these are rows. I know it doesn't really look at it, like it, but uh, I, I'm seeing this as rows. And, yeah, maybe... Um, maybe I have, like, a... a uh, day p and l so how am i how am i what's my profit and loss for the day that's something that can be interesting like up here so like every day i want to I, I like i want to open it up and see how how i'm doing and i feel like maybe the best way of doing it is like seeing what's the percentage the daily percentage so uh that's that's something i just open up and you know if it's a bloodbath, I just boom, just like see minus five percent, ah, and I, you know, something like that. Or if it's like, oh my god, like five uh, percent, yay, woohoo, you know. <laughs> or, in, or in GME, yay, plus uh, two hundred percent, like uh, stuff like that. Um, obviously, that's not going to be realistic. But yeah, something like that. So we can have like a rows of position here. And I uh, know another thing that'd be cool. So this can be like the PNL section, um, but since we have like a bunch of indicators, like we're we're going to make strategies, and uh, one thing that that can be cool is, um, and this it's not going to be like necessarily uh, separated by a line here. I'm just trying to logically place stuff for now, but we can also have like like uh, metrics or strategies. So according to my selling strategies uh, how are how are each of my positions doing so we can probably uh, lasso this to be honest this is actually not bad the whiteboard uh, i'm kind of enjoying this to be honest and i should be using the rainbow rainbow color there's a rule at work you have to use a rainbow pen um but uh we're, we're gonna use black for now um yeah so we can have like uh you know, SS, maybe a sell score. Like, the higher it is, the more probably you should sell or something like that. Um, that's something we can have. And then on the right, we can have, like, potential. So uh, I'm actually going to erase this and make it bigger. And uh, so let's say this part takes half of the screen, right? We, we want, we want our, our UI to be kind of logically uh, good so <laughs> logically good what does that mean you know we don't want it to be like uh, we want it, don't want to take something to take uh, 23 70 thirds of your screen right you want to split in halves and quarters and uh, and thirds and, and logical increments like of uh, you know has to be a factor of 12 would be a general rule um, general rule because you know probably some someone somewhere is doing something crazy that works but you know let's take the highest probably and ideally we cover all, all the space but uh this is going to be like an evolving evolving application so uh you know we can save some space some for some uh, future widgets or something like that so uh maybe i can have like an outlook so maybe according to like i can decide a strategy so like maybe i can you know, if I really want to push this, maybe eat, like I can have widgets that are customizable that take up certain space and 
for each of the widgets, I can put a strategy in that widget. So an outlook strategy would be a, a strategy that I believe would, would indicate a, an up and coming stock or, or security or a company or something like that. So it can have like stock one, yeah, stock one, and then you can have a score. I don't know why sometimes I write it up the text tool and sometimes I jot it out with the pen. I don't know. So we can have like a score of, I don't know, 90. And then it can have like a bunch of these and they should be sorted, right? So it should, so they should, I should have the best scoring stock on the top, right? I don't want to open up my, my, uh, my browser and have it be in, uh, in alphabetical order. Um, or else I'll be buying Apple all the time. And so this means that score, so there's get, probably going to have to be a mechanism where I, I score based on the indicators, I score out what's the highest probability of, of being a good, uh, purchase. So like, that's like, we can have at the, in, in our head, we can have, you know, I'm probably going to need that. I'm probably going to need something like that. Right. And uh, there's probably going to be like a selling score and it doesn't have to be a score. Like, you know, it could be binary or it can be, uh, like a number. Uh, I'm not really sure yet. So we can't really like, we don't know if some strategies are going to be yay or nay. And maybe we can combine some, Oh, that's interesting. Maybe we can combine some strategies. So maybe a stock, like a strategy can be a certain, um, Maybe maybe a strategy is actually a combination of some indicators, and you can combine some strategies together to make like meta strategies. That's kind of interesting. We'll keep that in mind as we go along. See if it still makes sense. Um, and yeah, this can be something like that. Okay, so I'm kind of satisfied with this, um, at least for now. Uh, logo. Then it's going to be a search, and you know maybe we can do some autocomplete here. And uh, this will take me, so we can probably do another page. And you can probably select on any stock, right? You can probably be able to click any stock. I'm not sure I want to click on any position. Maybe if you click on the position and open up the stock page. So we definitely have a stock page that we're going to have. And that just kind of seems to make sense. You want to see how uh, Apple is doing, doing a court. Yeah. Maybe you just want to go, go to the browser and see like, how, how is Apple doing according to my, um, my assessment of things. So maybe that's something uh, we need to work on next. And, uh, we're going to have to create the strategies page as well, which I don't really know how I'm going to do for now, but we're, we're going to get there. And if I unselect this, So it's kind of a tool. It's like an enhanced. No, I was gonna say it's an enhanced paint, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to hurt uh, paint's feelings on that because you know, paint is king. So the stock. So the ticker should probably be top left. You know, for now I'm not thinking of adding the line chart. Uh, I could. I you know I could. You know, you never know. Uh, maybe you know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe add line chart just because it might be cool. Uh, if we're going to add the line chart, we definitely need uh, service and events, though. It, like, really complexifies the design. And uh, I'm not going to be trading intraday. Oh, no, 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 no. And uh, there's there's software. Like, don't forget, one of the, you know, one of the factors we want to keep in mind is, you know, what's the best solution for for the problem? And... I can always just include a link to Yahoo Finance here, and it'll probably be like way fine, right? So I have my indicators, and obviously that the best thing would would have the line chart here. Uh, we can always add that as a as another feature. It's definitely not day one, like for the the cost of doing it and the the return on investment. I don't I don't really feel it's worth it. Um, I don't have to use a uh, signal R, which, you know, it's possible we can do that, but, uh, not going to do that for now. <laughs> so maybe just include the link to Yahoo finance, uh, maybe see, uh, what's the, uh, P &L. So maybe the price, uh, okay. You know, there, there's starting to be a good, a, a good argument for signal R because if I just want the price, you know, it'd just be cool to have the price here and the P L. Well, maybe maybe we'll do Sir Singular.
No, maybe it'd be a web WebSocket implementation uh, instead of a REST API, which, you know, it's fine. We can do that. I actually never, uh, I implemented long polling before, but I haven't worked with the CLR yet, signal R, sorry, yet. So that's going to be uh, interesting. Yeah, you know, it might be interesting. I re <laughs> Unfortunately, I recorded a video on uh, technology choices for some reason. I should have done it after. I, I'm probably going to re-record it. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to speak in advance, but, uh, you know, so you have, uh, you know, 100 here. Then you have like 5%. And red or, or green, that's very important, very important to have the plus or minus in red or green. Um, and then I can have like, uh, if I have a few strategies, so like I, if I have a sell strategy or a buy strategy, maybe I can do like strategy one. Like you see like Outlook, maybe this is Outlook, right? And um so maybe Outlook is a type of strategy. I don't know. I should really write this down. Maybe, you know, here we're, we're, we're kind of listing all the, uh, we're listing all the stocks and the like overall score, but we're not listing each of the indicators that make up that score. So maybe here, if you want like more details, you can see like all the indicators. So maybe you can be like, indicator one or like you know concretely you know maybe rsi so rsi is the uh relative strength index uh i, I don't know if it's going to be useful or not but we're probably going to implement that because it's kind of popular and uh you know we can have like oh it's uh you know, 78 or something like that so oh we can probably uh, so this is the title, maybe move this title here and maybe this could be a grid that's going to be, uh, it's going to say indicator and we kind of list everything and maybe the last line can say score and then you can have like, I don't know, two, you know, it's two, it's a two, it's a two, it's a two. All right. That's, that looks actually pretty good. That looks pretty good. That's kind of cool. And would it be cool to see like things in real time? I oh, know that'd be that'd be quite cool. Things are like firing up in my brain. Um, so you never know. Maybe we'll do like a, um, like instead it might not be like every day, but maybe it's like, you know, every five minutes. You know, we we look at the the five minute data, or we can do like one minute data. Uh, but I still like to see a long-term strategy. So you know, uh, you know, you know, just you know, changing my requirements on the fly, like a typical typical client. So you know, maybe line charts can be cool. So we can have like uh, candlesticks and stuff, or stuff like that. I don't want to make it like too complex. Um, like I said. Adding a link to Yahoo Finance here might be good as a first iteration. Uh, but this, this is good. So we can have like different widgets. Maybe in the strategies page, you can create a new strategy and you can uh, rank your strategy in terms of importance. With that, we can, you know, display widgets in terms of importance in the in the page that's something we can do cool so i'm actually really liking this so far i can't believe this is live man <laughs> I, I look like a genius <laughs> or maybe i don't i don't know could be could be overselling myself here mm -mm -mm. so next page we would need is a strategies page uh yeah just making sure I wasn't having a seizure. And what would be important in our strategies? So strategies would probably be like very crud-like operations. Um, you'd probably have, you can probably list your existing strategies. Uh, I should probably start with this, but this video is probably gonna be a bit long. Just, just, just <laughs> 
if you haven't <laughs> if you haven't looked at the video already um uh, but hey but it is what it is you know and then we can probably uh um we can probably have buy sell uh, buy strategies and sell strategies i'm i'm thinking is there any like strategy now you, you're either buying or selling let's be honest you're either bullish or bearish yeah i think that's a reasonable I think that's a, a reasonable uh, yield that you're not gonna have strategies that are both buy or sell. Uh, there, there's a, there's a one caveat is um, maybe you want to have like volatile strategies or strategies that thrive on volatility, um, with like an, I don't know, like an iron car, iron condor like option thingy, something like that. So uh, maybe I don't want to discriminate on whether the the strategy is a buy signal or a sell signal maybe i want to make strategies that are signals and then associate them to buy signals right or associate them to buying so let's say i have so a strategy can be agnostic of whether i should buy or sell on it it can just be hey i have this data coming in and based on that data if it meets certain criteria i want to alert i want you to alert me hey this is a signal right and then we can configure signals and hook them into buying or selling or, or whatever. So we don't have to be uh, locked into if it's a buy or sell. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So, uh, but the, the, there is a caveat to this. This uh, can increase the risk of error for the user. Um, luckily, I do know who the user is and he's a very attractive guy. So we're actually good on that. So strap, so we can have like outload another strategy is <clears throat> ding dong time to sell it can be something like that yeah so you have strategies there now uh we're going to need a way to add strategies so we can draw this maybe like a plus add button here maybe like a plus Maybe like, you know, obviously we don't really need this, but you know, it might be nice to have an edit. Oh no, edit is actually pretty important. Never mind. So like, this is supposed to be a, this is supposed to be a pen, by the way. This is the eraser part. You know, trust me. Like, uh, yeah, this, this, this is a disaster. All right, let's just move on. And, um, you know, edit. maybe you can, if you click on edit, maybe you can remove some if you want. Um, we can do that later, to be honest, but it's going to be pretty important, you know, to showcase how to do stuff. So edit, boom, and then if you edit, so, okay, so if you click on plus, I'm assuming we should have like a pop-up or a modal. You know what? I actually have an idea. So we have a bunch of unused space here. Maybe what we can do is if you click on one, like without doing add, you click on one and then you see, you see what the info is. And then if you click on another, it auto populates on the side here. So uh, maybe, okay. So maybe at the top here would have the name of like this. So this, like if you click on it, the name goes here and then this section kind of appears. And then you can have uh, your indicators. I'm trying to draw as worse as I can probably. Um, but then your indicator one, and indicator two, and your scores here. Oh, maybe the edit button should be here. Oh, what if I want to delete though? If I want to delete, huh. So this is a kind of like a small UX decision. Um, I have a list of stuff here if I click on something. So I, yeah, I thought about it a little bit and I think I want to keep this pen here because if I click on it, so the things I can do is I can, uh, you know, you have like these three lines. So you can like resort them. So you can like drag them up or up or down or something like that. So I think that might be cool. Uh, maybe you have a circle beside it. And if you like click on the circle, it'll appear like a trash can here. So you can delete them. 
yeah and then if you want to edit the indicate the strategy itself you might want to have like another pen here and then that pen will like you can edit the name or the properties we can just like on the last line you do plus indicator wow that was really horrible ben jesus indicator you know plus and then uh so from the indicator maybe like an indicator you want to edit it becomes like a drop down i'm just shooting ideas right now so maybe when you add and you click a certain indicator uh you can like uh, drop it down and uh, so it, every indicator is going to have different fields to set. So that has to be dynamic. So let's say, uh, I add RSI. So let's say this is RSI. And so RSI has like one parameter normally. You can actually have two parameters. No, never mind. You have two parameters. The, the first parameter would probably be, uh, what's your type of period. So the period type, that means are you looking at data points every minute, uh, every five minutes, every 15 minutes, every day? Like that's a, a period, a period of time. And uh, another um, parameter you would want is the number of periods. So number of periods. And um, yeah, normally people do, I think they do 14 normally, stuff like that. And so then you can put whatever data types you want, stuff like that. And uh, probably have a save button. This is a bigger project than I expected. Uh, said everyone all the time. Um, save, maybe like a cancel. But you know what? A lot of these features you're going to rewrite in like <laughs> many applications. So it's gonna be a pretty good learning process, I feel. I don't know how much time it's going to take, to be honest, but we're going to have fun doing it, I think. I hope. I will. I do think. Never mind. At the bottom here, so maybe we can have like a buy, buy strategy. Then you can like select which one you want here. So maybe like uh, select and here you can have like sell strategy. You can have like select. So select is a drop down in this case. That's what I mean. Um, and obviously this selection has to be in this list, right? Boom. All right, that that's uh that's pretty good. Pretty uh pretty good. Pretty interesting. So earlier when I said this, it's probably going to be the buy strategy here. We could always look call it Outlook or something. I don't know. Cool. Um, is there any other page we need? Uh, eventually we're going to do notifications. That's more of a second, that's a non MVP for now, but, uh, we can always like put, uh, you know, a cog wheel or a cog, uh, settings here. All right. So this concludes the video for drawing out the interface. And I'm going to end it here. I was going to do all the system design stuff uh, in one go, but I think I'm going to break it up. Um, so yeah, let's send it out to the outro. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, really enjoyed making this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like and comment down below for suggestions and comments and subscribe for more videos. Uh, you can also check out my website for consulting and F sharp software development needs down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.